I did that, but here we go. Okay, um, so totally there is the first set of blanks there, okay, um, on your notes. So there's a triangle there. You want to label the reference angle, put a theta on it. It's like a zero with a line through it, okay? And then you're going to fill in some of the blanks there. It says trig ratios are used in right triangles and two other angles, uh, two angles other than right angles are called the reference angles. Okay, so make sure you label your reference angle and then fill in the blanks. Okay. So this is like quick review of what you did last year. Okay. All right. So you got to kind of watch the animation. Hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Opposite leg is across from the reference. Adjacent is next to it. I'm going to play that again. Okay. So watch it and then we'll write it. Okay. So oh, maybe. All right. So hypotenuse across from right. Opposite across from reference. Adjacent is next to reference. Your reference angle does not have to be the lower right angle. It could be the upper angle. Okay. So on your triangle doesn't have to be oriented that way. It could be oriented another way. So opposite is always across from the reference. It's not always the one on the left. Okay. Adjacent is always next to the reference. And remember, we usually abbreviate it H, O, and J, A, or H, Y, P, O, P, P, and A, D, J. Those should all go in those blanks. So I'll give you a minute to make sure your blanks are all filled in. Okay. The next one, so the next thing you're going to write, you see how there's that dashed line there? I want you to write everything on the next three screens above the dashed line. Okay, so you're going to be above the dashed line. So your sign, okay, of theta, and we tend to use thetas. I know last year you may have used x's or another variable there. We, that's the Greek letter theta. So we tend to use that to represent an angle, okay? Um, so your sign is your opposite over your hypotenuse. So you want to label your triangle. You can label it OPP and HYP, okay? And then write sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now, don't use that. The fraction bar is not the dashed line. Write this entire thing above the dashed line, okay? Because we're going to write something else below the dashed line in a minute. Okay. Cosine, so this should be on the second triangle all above the dashed line. You want to label your hypotenuse and your adjacent, which is next to your reference. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, the third one, and this one should be familiar, is tangent. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So label your opposite leg, label your adjacent leg, and tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. This would have been awesome if I could have started the year with this stuff, right? Because it's familiar a little bit. Okay, we're now going to go below the dashed line. You're not going to have to label the triangles. We're going to use the same triangle. But go back to the first triangle. Notice it's opposite and hypotenuse. 
when we flip the all of those ha all fractions have reciprocals okay so all of our trig functions have reciprocals cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and remember we call it sine not sin okay um and you abbreviate it csc all right so cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over opposite Ms. did miss rondo talk about cosecant at all last year no okay i didn't think she would but that's usually a new thing in this class Okay, the next one, the reciprocal of cosine, not cos, but cosine is secant, and we abbreviated SEC theta, and it's hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay. The next one is cotangent, okay? And cotangent equals the adjacent over the opposite. It's not cot, it's cotangent. That's how we abbreviate it. It is the reciprocal of tangent. All right, so we're going to now use those ratios, okay, um, and just look at sides of triangles. It's already solved for us, I believe, um, so we don't need to do any solving, um, but we're just going to look at the ratios, okay? Um, we're not going to simplify anything. We're not going to make lowest terms or anything on our fractions. We're just practicing sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, okay? So my reference angle is down here. Sine is what over what? Don't give me the numbers yet. What over what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So what's on my opposite leg right now? Three. What's on my hypotenuse? Five. So write three over five. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't want the numbers yet. What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. You have it right there on your page. Okay, so what's on my adjacent leg right now? Four. It's the one next to the reference angle. And what's on my hypotenuse? Five. Perfect. If it helps you to label it, like if it helps you to write, let's see if I can put a let me write on there. Um, if it helps you to do this and just put a little O there for opposite and H for hypotenuse and an A for adjacent, you can do that. That's okay. All right. All right, tangent is what over what? Not the numbers yet. Opposite over adjacent. So what is my opposite? Three. What's my adjacent? Four. So it should be three-fourths. And I'm purposely doing these slow. I want to make sure that you're getting it. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to flip all the reciprocals. There's a lot of ways you could do this. We could just look at these and couldn't we just flip them upside down? Yeah, we could do that. There are times, though, that I might ask you on a quiz to find the cosecant without doing the sine first. So you need to know that cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, okay? So let's do it with the hypotenuse over opposite part instead of just flipping. So let's see, this is my opposite, my adjacent, my hypotenuse. So cosecant is what over what without the numbers? Hypotenuse over opposite. So what is my hypotenuse? Five, what's my opposite? Three, so five thirds, okay? All right, secant is what over what? Hypotenuse over adjacent, what's on my hypotenuse? Five, what's on my adjacent? Good. And then cotangent is what over what? Adjacent over opposite, adjacent is? Opposite is? Three, okay? Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? All right, let's do another one together. Notice my reference angle changed. It's now up here at the top, okay? So what is, what's my hypotenuse? That's the easiest one to find first. 13, good. What's my opposite? 12 is across from the reference angle. And then my, that by default, that makes this one the adjacent, right? So it's always good to identify those things first. 
All right, sine, opposite over hypotenuse. So what are we getting for sine when our numbers? 12 over 13. I'm going to do this one a little faster. Okay. All right, cosine should be adjacent over hypotenuse. What's my adjacent? Five, and my hypotenuse is 13. Okay. All right, tangent. Opposite over what? Adjacent. What's my opposite? 12. What's my adjacent? Five. And if you hadn't noticed by this point in this course, we don't do mixed numbers, right? Um, I'm not even in these first few examples going to have you put it in lowest terms because we're just looking at ratios. I'm just making sure you understand the ratios. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going to write, now we're going to do cosecant. Again, I have the opposite, the hypotenuse and the adjacent. All right. So cosecant should be hypotenuse over opposite. So what's on my hypotenuse? 13. What's on my opposite? 12. So 13 over 12. Okay. Secant should be hypotenuse over what? Adjacent. What's my hypotenuse? What's my adjacent? Five. All right. Cotangent should be adjacent over opposite. So what's my adjacent? And my opposite? 12. Okay. All right. I want you to take, there's two more of them there. Three, four, th example three and example four. I want you to try them. Do not put them in lowest terms. So leave it the six, the eight, and the 10. Okay. Just try those ones really quick. All right, give you about 30 seconds. Shouldn't take you that long, but give you 30 seconds. Okay, I want you to check with your table partner, okay? Check them with your table partner. Okay, let's check them. All right, so what'd you get for sine on example three? Six over 10. What about cosine? Eight over 10, tangent? Six over eight, perfect. All right, cosecant. Good, secant and cotangent. Perfect. All right, um, example four, sine. Good, cosine. Good. Sorry, I said or said tangent, sorry. Okay, uh, cosecant. Good, secant. And cotangent. Nine over 12. Okay, making sense? All right, I'm gonna move out of this PowerPoint um, and go back to a normal page here. All right, so bear with me for just a second. I forgot to import it. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to look at, I want you to read the instructions on the next page. So read the instructions over both um, sets of examples while I'm importing this in, okay?
Okay, so as you're reading that, hopefully you're realizing that there is, um, I don't have my sign up anywhere. I don't see it. I gotta find it. Um, there's something else we're gonna need to help us out in this section of the notes, okay? Um, there's, there's another thing we're gonna need. So it says we have to evaluate the six trig functions of the angle theta, okay? Um, we don't have all of the parts though, okay? What do I use with right triangles to get all the parts? No, we're not in 30, 60, 90s yet. There's another one. What's that called? I hate A squared. Yes, okay, the Pythagorean. All right. I really hate it when you call it a squared plus b squared equals c squared because later on in trig, we assign the a, the b, and the c to something else. I prefer to call it leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. But that's Mrs. Ballard. And since I don't teach like seventh grade math when you learn it, um, you all learn it a, b, and c. All right. Um, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem um, to figure out that last side. Okay. Um, so before I find my six trig ratios, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. So, uh, I have my two legs here. What are my, what, what's one of my legs? Five. So I'm going to go five squared. Um, what is my other leg? 12 squared. And then it doesn't matter what I call the third leg, the, the hypotenuse. I can call it H. I can call it C. I can call it question mark. I can call it smiley face. I don't know. I'm going to go with question mark. Okay. It, we're just trying to find that third so there or the third side or the hypotenuse. Okay. So what's five squared? Good. What is 12 squared? Good. Um, what is 25 plus 144? Good. And then how do I undo the square? Now in algebra, right? Algebra, algebra two, when we take a square root, what are we supposed to put out front? I don't do that when I'm talking geometry right now, right? Because does it make sense to have a negative hypotenuse? No, so we only take what we call the principal square root. So we're only gonna do 13, okay? And that's what equals question mark. I would probably label it on my triangle, okay? All right, we already know that that is the hypotenuse. It, it labeled it hypotenuse on that one for us. What is on the opposite right now? 12, good. And what is on the adjacent? Five. Perfect. All right. Um, did you notice how it came out nice and pretty? Do you know what those are called when they come out nice and pretty like that? They're called a Pythagorean. Pythagoras is my favorite, by the way. I wish I could have gone to prom with him. I knew a lady who did. So one of our very first baseball players here at Talkwitz High School, he went off and he played for the Storm Miller was his last name. His grandmother taught with me when I was first teaching and she was so old that she went to prom with Pythagoras. I was so jealous. All right. Oh, I get it. Okay. Um, she really wasn't that old. It's a joke. All right. So one of them is 5, 12, 13. Do we know any others that come out nice and pretty like that? Look back at the other examples. Weren't these pretty? So what's the, what's this one here? Three, four, five is another one that works out really well. Three, four, five. Guess what? You can multiply, you can multiply them. I could say it's six, eight, 10, and it's going to come out perfect. All I did was multiply that by two, right? That's why I told you on these ones not to reduce it because it was just a multiple of the other one. Nine, 12, 15 was another multiple of it. Um, the one that comes up not quite as often, but I use sometimes because we all start recognizing three, four, five, five, twelve, thirteen. They're all over the place. Okay, eight, fifteen, seventeen is another one that comes up quite a lot. Okay, all right. So if you don't know your Pythagorean triples, that's okay because you can always use the Pythagorean theorem. All right, we haven't found our six trig ratios yet, so we've got to find our six trig ratios. So we're going to go sine of theta equals cosine of theta. So basically you're having to write out what we did 
and was nicely typed out for you in the last one. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Sorry, my work's kind of running into each other here. Okay. You can use the numbers this time. What is sine of that tri triangle? Twelve over thirteen. Perfect. What does that make the cosecant then? Good. There's no reason I can't just do that right away and flip it right away like that. Okay. If they're asking me to find all six. Okay. What is the cosine of that right triangle? Five over thirteen. Right. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. All right. Secant is what. 13 over 5. Good. All right. What's the tangent of that right triangle? 12 over 5. So the cotangent is 5 over 12. Okay. What's my missing hypotenuse on example 6? Five. If you know it, I don't need to see Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So that's my hypotenuse. All right. Um, I want you to figure out, um, I want you to label the opposite and the adjacent on your own. So which one's opposite, which one's adjacent? Okay. Check it with your table partner. Okay, do we all have opposite and adjacent in the right spot? Three is opposite, four is adjacent. Okay, um, what I want you to do now, actually we'll do, it. we'll do one more together here. So we're gonna go sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Then we're going to do cosecant of theta. I'm doing them next to each other on purpose even though I don't have room, so. You can do it down below. I should have done it down below. Cotangent of theta. Cotangent of theta equals. Okay. All right. Looking at the sign. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. What's on the opposite? Three over five. Good. What's the cosecant then? Five over three. Okay, what's the cosine of this triangle? Four over five, good. So what's the secant? Five over four, flip the reciprocal. Okay, what's the tangent of this triangle? Three over four, what's the cotangent then? Four over three. Okay, I want you to do two things on example seven, okay? and only do these two things. Okay. So first I need you to find the third side. Okay. Use Pythagorean theorem. Then I need you to label opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. Okay. So only those two, those two things. Okay. Don't go any further than that. Don't try to find the ratios yet.
Okay. I want you to take a minute and I want you to check just your side and your opposite hypotenuse adjacent with your table partner. Check them with them right now. Make sure your table partner knows how to get the third side. Okay. What was my third side? What did it come out to be? Eight, right? It was one of our triples. If you recognize it, great. If not, Pythagorean theorem worked, right? All right. So we had to find sine. Oh, so not yet. You didn't do that part yet. What was the opposite? 15 is the opposite. What's the adjacent? Eight. And what's the hypotenuse? Okay, perfect. All right, now I want you to find all six. I'm not going to write them out for you this time. So you got to write out all, I want you to find all six ratios on your own this time. No help from your neighbor yet. So just try to find all six on your own. about 10 more seconds. I right, check with your table partner. Okay. All right. Table one, what's the sign? What do we get? Anybody? Table one. What is it? 15 over 17. Perfect. Okay. Uh, table two. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. It's on the, on, it's on your desks. All right. Table two, what's cosecant? What is it? Cosecant. 17. I'm doing the reciprocals. Okay. All right. Table three. What was the cosine? Eight over 17. Perfect. And then table four. What was the secant? Good. Table five. What was the tangent? Good. And table six. What was the cotangent? Eight over 15. Okay. What gets a little bit wonky about example eight? All of a sudden, we have a square root in it, right? We're not going to be able to hide from them, okay? You're going to be able to do square roots in your sleep, all right? We got it. We got to be able to do them. We got to be able to rationalize. We got to be able to square them. We got to be able to just know how they work, okay? We got to be able to simplify them. That's this whole going to be are going to be all over this whole unit, just like when we did factoring and then we did rationals and we factored a whole bunch. In this little unit, we're going to do square roots a whole lot, okay? Um, they're just all over the place. 
Um, we're gonna so we'll get really good at them. All right, I gotta do leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So what is my um leg? Five. So five squared plus I don't know this, right? So I'm gonna make that my question mark. And then I have to square this hypotenuse, which is five squared of two squared. All right. What's five squared? 25. Good. All right. Uh, five squared here is 25. What's the square root of two squared? It's just two, right? We've talked about that before, that there's a shortcut there, right? The square and the square root cancel each other out. So what's 25 times two? 50. Good. Okay. How do I move the 25 to the other side? Subtract. What do you get? 25, and then how do you undo the square? Square root, what's the square root of 25? Five. Five. Wasn't that Zach, Cody, and the twins? Right there. All right. So, what is on my opposite right now? The, this five, right? What's on my adjacent? The other five, how nice, okay? And then the other one is hypotenuse. Okay, so we're gonna find all six again. So sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. You can see how I write this so much. You can see how great my handwriting is with it. Um, Cause I go fast, secant of theta and cotangent of theta. Let's take and write those parts down and then we will do it together. I'm going to show you here. Okay, just give me a sec, okay? All right. We are going to simplify this. I know in the first four we did not. I was just trying to get used to the ratios, and I did all triples, so I used ones that had to be, that could, that you would have simplified, but I, we didn't. We are going to simplify here, okay? All right, so what is the sign of this one? What's the opposite? Five. What's the hypotenuse? Good. Could I simplify that a little bit? What's going to cross out? The five. So I have one over square root of two. So I'm going to do, I have a couple of things I'm going to do at, at one time here. Before I try to rationalize, because I'm not allowed to leave that radical in the um, true religion from banning is calling. Interesting. Isn't that a banned true religion? Maybe not. Okay. It's a what? It's a jean company? Great, they're calling right now. All right, I guess they make mom jeans now. Okay, um, we're going to flip the reciprocal, okay? And get my cosecant. So I'm gonna flip this reciprocal. Do I really need the one in the denominator? No, I totally did not leave my self enough space here. Um, I'm gonna try to really squish it in. I could just write that as square root of two. So I've got cosecant. And notice I did that before I did anything to the, to the, to the denominator to rationalize, okay? Technically, I have to rationalize the denominator. So remember, I multiply by top and bottom by radical 2. So we get square root of 2 over what's square root of 2 times itself. What's the shortcut? It's 2, right? Because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is to take the shortcut. We're going to do it 5 million times, okay? I wrote these way too close. So I'm going to move them a little bit. All right, cosine of theta tangent of theta. I even left extra space and I didn't give myself enough room. Okay. So cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. What's on my adjacent? Five. What's on my hypotenuse? Five squared to two. What is it reduced to? What's in the numerator? One over square root of two. Is it any different than what I just got in the first in that first sign? No. So can't I just write the same answer? Yeah. yeah. So this I know that secant's going to be square root of two, and I know this is going to be square root of two over two. You're going to see that one over square root of two and the square root of two over two all over the place. We're good. That's going to become one of your new best friends. Okay. All right. Tangent. Um. What is on my opposite? Five. Okay. What is on my adjacent? 
five. So what's that reduced to? What's the reciprocal of one? One. That's a very, the 45, it's a 45, 45, 90. It's a very special rectangle or triangle that we see quite a bit of. Okay. All right. We're going to try, let's see, how much do we have time do we have left? To... We get out at 57. All right. We're going to try one of these other ones. Okay. Because I may throw this into homework. We'll finish. And we, we're not getting through these notes in one day. There's no way. Okay. All right. So we're going to let theta be the acute angle of a right triangle. Find the values of the other five trig functions of theta. We're only going to do example nine right now. Okay. They told me sine. They didn't give me a picture, did they? No. no. So I'm going to draw my own picture. Okay. So I've got 90. I've got a theta that I'm going to put in. I know that this is the opposite. That's the adjacent. That's the hypotenuse. Sine is what over what? opposite over hypotenuse. Notice I just labeled it right there. So I'm going to put four on my opposite. What am I going to put on my hypotenuse? Seven. Do I know the other side? What am I going to have to use? Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to go four squared plus all the question mark squared equals seven squared. What's four squared? 16. Seven squared. 49. I got to move the 16 to the other side. What do we end up with? Everybody okay with 33? We subtracted 16. How do I undo the square? Do I need the plus minus? Nope. And that's not one that breaks down. So we're just going to leave it as square to 33. It's going to look weird. It's okay. Okay. You, I'll give you a couple seconds because I know some of us are still writing. All right, you always, always, always need to look for the easy ones first. What's the? Which one is the reciprocal of sine? What do we call it? Cosecant. Don't I get that one for free, basically? It's 7 over 4. Yay, that one's done. I got 4 left. Okay. All right, so next one I'm going to do, I'm going to go cosine next. What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, square root of 33 over 7. What's the reciprocal of cosine? Secant. Notice I'm working in pairs. I work with the, the, the my original 3, and then I find its reciprocal. Okay? All right. So the reciprocal would be 7 over square root of 33. I have to rationalize it which means I've got seven square root of 33 over 33. See how we're gonna have to do this rationalizing thing 5 million times. You wanna take the shortcut with your denominator. A radical times itself is the number underneath. All right, I know the bell's gonna ring really fast. So tangent really quickly would be four over square root of 33. Cotangent would be square root of 33 over four. And then I would need to rationalize this really fast. So 4 squared to 33 over 33. We will keep working on it tomorrow, okay? I am going to put a little bit of homework out there. I will put the weekly workout. I haven't done that yet, but it will be out there in a couple hours, okay?